I don't know what's up with my fringe today. It just sort of happened after I washed my hair. Kind of digging it. Hello everybody, I'm Roxy. This is Chaotic Beautiful File and today I bring you a video that I am so excited to be making. If you followed me through 2021, you know that I had so many reading plans for this year and most of them sort of fell apart. I planned not to be doing much of anything during the first half of the year and then I signed up for a sort of intense literary translation course. So my reading time was cut in half. Interspersed with that, I had all the stress of going in and out of lockdown, which prevented me to take my English language exams for my visa. And I was just so stressed out. And then of course, there was the whole issue of the move and I had to quarantine. And then I started my master's. So it was all a bunch of unexpected stuff except the master stuff, everything else was very unexpected. So in the end, everything kind of fell apart, which will be reflected in my goals 2021 and 2022 video. I'm still making that because I still want to share what worked and some of the goals that I hope to eventually do or catch up on. But anyways, I do not stress about that because those challenges are challenges that I set myself. And if I don't achieve them, nothing will be wrong with the world. And in that spirit, actually, I am toning down the challenges for 2022 because I have zero idea of how that will be. However, I did see this tag and I thought it was pretty fun. I saw it first on Instagram, basically, Someone had created a 12 books for 2022 tag and then a bookstagrammer that I follow changed it to 22 books for 2022 and I thought that sounded lovely because I have a lot of books here actually. You would very much mock me if you saw my room and how many books I've accumulated in such a short time compared to my room library that I have back in Chile. This is a much smaller selection and I thought it would be fun to select 22 books that I want to read most in 2022. Also because my organization system right now is virtually non-existent and so I thought, hey, I should create a pile for the books that I want to read most in 2022. Again, this is not a challenge, it's sort of a having things to be excited about and also having them on a separate space so every time I don't know what to read, I can be like, oh, these were books I was really excited about. I'm going to pick up one of these. That's the concept of this video. It is a very mixed pile. I'm just super excited. The first book I have is a poetry collection by Carl Ann Duffy. She's one of my favorite poets. This is Selling Manhattan. There is no specific reason as to why this as opposed to any other Carl and Duffy collection, except that I don't allow myself to buy more than one. And so I picked this one up because I liked the cover and it sounded interesting. I will read this and then buy another and so on and so forth until I've read them all. Then I have The Power of Geography by uh, T. Marshall. The subtitle for this is 10 Maps That Reveal the Future of Our World. I read and adored Prisoners of Geography, which is the first installment in this series. You can see it's plugged here, which is all about geopolitics and how geography has shaped a lot of our political conflicts. And this is sort of the continuation of that, starting, I think, in the present and then sort of projecting to the future. I bought it thinking I was going to pick it up right away. Clearly that was not the case, but I'm very excited to pick it up in 2022. The next book is very different. Aristotle and Dante Discover, sorry, Dive Into the Waters of the World by Benjamin Alida Science. I love Ari and Dante discovered secrets of the universe. I have been waiting for this sequel for years. And when I finally saw it at Gaze the Word, a wonderful LGBT plus bookshop here in London, I had to get it right away. Again, I thought I would read it right away. It looks chunky, but you know, it's like YA spacing and very large font. So it will take me no time. I would love to read this in a sitting. I hope it's as enjoyable as the other. Then I have Black Snow by Mikhail Bulgakov. Please ignore the sticky tab there. I don't know how that got in there. I've already started this. I'm on chapter nine. This is about a failed journalist who becomes, I think, director of a theater. It was so good. I just never 
picked it up again and I am thinking of restarting it just because I really really want to read it in one go. This was the last book I picked up before moving from the quarantine hotel into my room and sort of got lost in that hoopla so I want to read it I think from cover to cover. Okay let's just do it you know let's just do it. Whoop. Okay now I have to restart it. Now that I've said the number I will probably remember <laughs> where I was. The bookmark has been moved, I will restart this, but it was super fun and I want to keep reading it. Another book that I started and want to restart is Hansaman by Shirley Jackson. This was another one that I started at the end of October and then November became super hectic and also emotionally turmoily month and I just didn't continue on and I want to read it from beginning to end. Not necessarily in one sitting, but like two tops. It, I don't think it has chapters really so I think this one is best enjoyed as a devoured experience. Another one that sort of trails from 2021 is The End of the End of the Earth by Jonathan Franzen. This is a collection of essays that Danny picked for my nonfiction November. I did not get to most of those books in that TBR. I really really wanted to read them but I just couldn't so go check that TBR video down below though because it is a very fun video and I also of course will link my November wrap-up down below and in the I as always. Now another book that I really want to read that I also thought I would for sure get to and now that I'm looking at it it could have been a pick for the low-key overdue book club but I don't want any of these books to be subjected to any other sort of project. I should have mentioned that before. If on a Winter's Night, A Traveler by Italo Calvino. This is an edition in Spanish. I know this is super bookish and it's about a book that takes you to other books. I'm not exactly sure of the plot anymore. If I'm going to get into Calvino, it's probably going to be through this book. Another book in Spanish, this one sadly I don't think it's translated into English, but this is Volverse Palestina by Lina Meruane or To Become a Palestinian. I am very excited, this is memoir examining her identity as Palestinian but also Chilean but also living in the States. Fascinating, you know, I love Lina Meruane and how she writes. A book that I've already started and I remember very clearly so I'm not going to restart but I do want to finish early on in the year is The Farewell Symphony by Edmund White. I started reading this for uni but we only had to read an excerpt and I just haven't continued on. It's very autobiographical. It is a stand-in for Edmund White's reminiscing about wanting to become a writer when young and all the men that he knew that have passed away from AIDS, but also just all the people that he met while he was trying to become a writer and trying to figure out what sort of writer he was. A book that I also need to set aside time to sit down and read, but I am so excited to get to do that, is Red Comet, The Short Life and Blazing Art of Sylvia Plath. Of course, I am late to this party, but the thing is that I got this book and literally a month later, the paperback was announced. This was not cheap and also this is very heavy. Admittedly this is beautiful and I do presume that the font in the paperback is going to be tiny because the paperback doesn't look that thick either. But I still feel like I need to read this ASAP to have made the hardback carrying worth it because also I got this at the toppings in Edinburgh. I carried this all the way from Edinburgh <laughs> Yes. Anyways, also, by the way, I also want to read it because I want to know more about Sylvia Plath, but also because I've been craving that amazing biography. A couple of years ago, I read Ruth Franklin's Shirley Jackson, A Rather Haunted Life, and I loved it. I think about the book all the time. And last year, I read a couple of really good biographies on musicians, and I feel like I haven't done that this year. I guess you can kind of count who was that man, but that's not really a biography. Oh no, I did read Leonardo this year by Walter Isaacson and that was amazing. So yeah, I really enjoy really good biographies. Another one I'm so looking forward to is Shortcomings by Adrian Tomin or Tomain. I think this is the first novel that I would read by him. I've only read short graphic stories. He is a graphic novelist, but I am obsessed with his work. I just binge bought them, so I need to binge read them. The following book I brought all the way from Chile and I bought in Chile. I bought it literally a couple weeks before I flew and I knew I had to carry it with me and it's still in its packaging. It's called 
I'll, I'll translate Music, Dictatorship and Resistance, The Paris Orchestra in Buenos Aires by Esteban Buch. This talks about Daniel Barenboim, a very talented and prominent Argentinian pianist and orchestra conductor and the Paris Orchestra. This is one of those books that I keep wanting to pick up. Like every time I look at it, I say, oh, I really want to read that. And so 2022 is going to be the year. Oh, related to classical music, although very different. This is The Ghost of Frederick Chopin by Eric Fay. I just discovered this at uh, Waterstones, I think, but I didn't buy it right away. And I just kept seeing it. And in the end, I bought it because it seemed like so fun. This is not necessarily what I usually read. I think it's a bit satire meets like mystery. But it, if the satire is like the biggest part, I think I will love it. This was translated from the French by Sam Taylor. And it says, Made in Prague, category, paranormal investigation, contains music, mystery, miracles. It's about a journalist who discovers this woman who claims that Chopin's ghost is haunting her house. It sounds like a romp. I hope it's really good. Another book that I bought this year that I mentioned in a video that I recorded months ago that I still haven't edited, but I hope to edit soon. We'll see. A dress book by Neil Bartlett. So this is Neil Bartlett's 2021 short story collection. And I don't know if they are interconnected or not, but I am very excited to get to it. I think Mark Nash already read this and he told me he really enjoyed it. Another book recommended by Mark Nash. What do you know? This is Lot or Lot by Shola von Reinhold. This is historical fiction, I think, but it's also set in the present, so it's like half and half. And it's about this woman who's obsessed with the 1920s and she discovers like another side of the 1920s and begins researching. So I think it's kind of like possession, but queer. And that sounds amazing. Very different, but also sounds amazing. Oh, you can't read. Oh no, you can't. Okay, this is The Idea of the Brain, A History by Matthew Cobb. Need I say more? Redburn by Herman Melville. This is also in its package. I had this brought to me when my dad came to visit. This is about a guy who travels to Paris and becomes a dandy, I think. Wanted to read this as soon as I saw it. It's both a topic that I would be very interested in, but also I really loved Moby Dick. But also this is quoted in Ready to Catch Him Should He Fall by Neil Bartlett at the end. And I was like, huh, that book, I really want to read it. The last fiction book of this pile is A Tropic of Serpents by Mary Brennan. This is the second installment in the Memoirs of Lady Trent series. I have never read this one, but I've read the first one twice and I've seen the rest of the series here. And so I will read it and if I like it, I might pick up the third one in the second half of the year or in 2023. Bill Bryson's The Body. I've been wanting to read this for so long, but I I'm very glad I waited because I found a second-hand copy and so it was so cheap and it's in great condition, although it clearly has been read. Sometimes I find books and it's like the person did not read this book. I really want to read more Bill Bryson, but I also really want to read books about anatomy. So this is a great crossover. Books that I will have to sit down and read soon-ish by Kelly and Sach Wienersmith or Weinersmith. This is subtitled 10 emerging technologies that will improve and or ruin everything. I love technology, but also I'm very scared of it. And I think that is a very reasonable position to have. This is not a graphic novel, really. It's not graphic nonfiction, but it does have some illustrations. It is beautiful, however, and I'm so happy because I got this on sale. It was cheaper than getting the paperback. And I'm so happy because I was about to get the paperback on several occasions. Finally, a book that I've been dipping in and out of, but I definitely want to dip more into is The Piano, A History in a Hundred Pieces by Susan Tomes. I super enjoy this. I just love how Susan Tomes describes the pieces and talks about them and their relevance. And she does provide an overview of why the composer is important for that time. I would not call this a history, although maybe once I finish it, I will feel that way. Who knows? The final book I don't have here, but I have already ordered it. And it's a book that has become a staple of my year every single year. And that is The Best of 
American Science Writing 2021. I love the Best American Science and Nature Writing series, more so than any other series. This year, guest editor was Ed Young, and I haven't read I Contain Multitudes yet, but I have read some of his pieces that have been included in past anthologies. I am just very excited to see what he picks. I ordered it through Better World Books, and it's my first time ordering from there to London, so we'll see how that goes. It can't go any worse, really, than ordering to Chile. So yeah, I will be picking this up as soon as it arrives. Have you read any of these books? Do you want to read any of these books? And or are you excited for any particular books this 2022? That's all. See you next time. Uh, the other book that I... And, and, no, and, uh, okay, I feel like this video should have been quicker than it actually is.